all right folks um my name is isaac kofi aj and i welcome you to co-prime statistics design of experiments that's 336 i will advise and i will plead that before you proceed to watch this video kindly do what to subscribe to our channel like our videos and also share so for our outline for today we are going to consider two things we are going to consider the basic terminologies in designing an experiment and then we also consider the types of designs. So with the terminologies, we first of all have to look at what is an experiment. Very important. An experiment, it is a test or series of tests in which purposeful, and I'll stress on that, purposeful changes are made to the input variables or factors of a system so that we may observe and identify the reasons for the changes in the output or response variable so here the most important thing to consider is the deliberate or purposeful changes to the input variable right and then we also look at the effects on the output variable so we have input you, you, you purposefully change the input variable and then you watch to see what will happen to the output variable. So whenever we do this, we say we are performing an experiment. So an example is comparing the effectiveness of several drugs to see which is the best, right? So in a researcher's quest to, um, um, to determine which drug is more effective in treating headache, he may sample three drugs, of course. He may sample paracetamol, panadol extra, and probably APC. And then he would test to see which of this drug is more effective in the treatment of headache. And when this is done, we say we are performing an experiment. Two, we will consider an experimental unit. So here, an experimental unit they are the things to which we apply the treatment they are the things we apply the treatment and an example is a plot of land groups of customers so if you look at the example that um, is given under the experiments of course we are going to use this example throughout the lecture so i advise that you you take note of it so here our experimental units will not be a plot of land neither will it be groups of customers can you guess what it will be? All right, so our experimental units here will be patients who are suffering from headache. So they are the ones we are going to consider as our experimental units. So depending on the nature of the experiment or what you are testing, it will help you to, to derive what your experimental units will be in the experiment. We'll proceed to look at what is a treatment? Very important. So treatments are the different procedures that a researcher wants to compare. The different procedures that a researcher wants to compare. So an example is types of painkillers. So if you consider the example given under experiments where we said our interest is to compare the effectiveness of drugs in the treatment of headache. Here, our treatment, what we are comparing, we, are, we, we said that we are comparing three drugs, that is APC, Panadol, Extra, and then Paracetamol. So these three drugs, which we call the types of painkillers, become our treatment because they are the ones that we are going to compare to see which of them is more effective in treating headache. So they become our treatments. Level. It is a given value or certain for each factor or explanatory variable. So a given value or certain for each factor or explanatory variable. So we'll consider, we'll throw more light on level when in, in the subsequent lecture. So now let's look at factor, very, very important factor. So in designing an experiment, a factor becomes a variable that is deliberately varied deliberately varied or changed in a controlled manner in an experiment to observe its impact on the response variable 
or simply put it is as it is what a researcher what wants to study so what a researcher wants to study is what we call the factor so can the example given under experiment can you guess what the factor is so now you realize that under the example given under experiment our factor will be how effective a drug is in the treatment of headache because that is what we are interested in so we are interested in studying how effective a drug is in the treatment of headache so that becomes our factor treatment of headache becomes our factor six we'll consider response variable response variable it is the variable observed or measured in an experiment so in every experiment you need to get the response variable so what you actually perform a measurement on or what we actually measure becomes our response variable now effects the effect is the changes in the response variable that occurs as a as a factor is changed from one level to another so whenever you perform an experiment every researcher's um, 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 aim is to see to check and know if uh, um, um, the effect before is the same as the effect after it's very very important now eight we'll proceed to look at what we call background variable or noise variable or blocking variable they are the same so now a blocking variable or background variable is a variable that potentially can affect a response variable in an experiment but it is not of interest as a factor right so it has the potential of uh, of affecting the response variable but we are not interested in it we don't consider it as a factor we said a factor is what we are actually interested in studying so if you are interested in studying something or a variable we call it a factor if you are not interested in studying it it becomes what a blocking variable so they have a tendency to affect the outcome of the experiment but we don't consider them as what factors so an example is time operator and then we can even give uh, we can even extend our examples to gender to race right and to even height so in the example given under experiment we said our interest is to compare the effectiveness of certain painkillers in the treatment of headache so here a background variable something that we are not considering but we know can affect the outcome of the experiment could be race right it could be that panadol works better in blacks than in white people right so if your sample unit consists of black people and white people it could be that panadol extra may work better on blacks than on on whites right so this becomes a blocking variable or a noise variable now we can also consider gender or sex it would be that panadol extra works better in males than in females right so it becomes a blocking variable now how do we how do we how do we solve this problem we can only control this variable by what by blocking we can only control it by blocking so in the experiment we treat variables that can affect the outcome of the experiment but you do not want to consider them as a factor you treat them as blocks as blocks in the experiment so as we proceed we will throw more light on what blocking is I made mention of blocking now let's look at the importance of blocking when you when you introduce blocks in an experiment what what does it do so one it increases the precision of the experiment. precision how accurate the result is it increases the precision of the experiment and two it factor out variables that are not studied so as mentioned that blocking variables are variables that you know they can affect the outcome of the experiment but you are not interested in studying them 
so if factor out those 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 variables that has a tendency to affect the outcome of the experiment but we, we our interest is not to study them right now let's look at the cousin of a uh, <laughs> blocking variable that is nuisance or lurking variable nuisance or lurking variable now i want you to take note of the difference a nuisance variable is an unknown very important unknown blocking variable was known but nuisance variable is unknown it is an unknown and a potential independent variable so another key thing is it is unknown it is independent and it has the tendency of affecting the response variable in an experiment so the only thing that differentiates between nuisance variable and a blocking variable is that nuisance variable is unknown but blocking variable is known whenever you are comparing and um, conducting an experiment now let's proceed to look at the causes of experimental error now obviously experimental error is the error that occur as a result of conducting an experiment <laughs> as simple as that but let's look at the causes what what actually brings experimental error what actually brings experimental error whenever you're conducting an experiment so one we said that inherent variables in the experimental unit so these are natural causes inherent variables in the experimental unit so as i said earlier um, the example we gave an under exper um, experiment where we said we are our interest is to compare how effective a drug is in treating headache it could be that an inherent variable such as maybe um, a underlying health condition could pose a challenge to how effective the drug could be maybe someone is suffering from asthma and then it could be that panadol extra is not working will not work better on that person because of that underlying health condition so this becomes a natural cause for experimental error right now let's look at the second one lack of uniformity in conducting the experiment uniformity is very very important so whenever an, a, a researcher is not able to maintain uniformity when he is collecting data he has a tendency to cause what we call experimental error now importance of replication replication simply, simply means repetition right how important is replication in an experiment one it allows an estimate of an experimental error and two allows for a more precise estimate of the sample mean so these are the two important of what replication in an experiment now let's look at another important term called randomization so another important term called randomization so we are going to look at the the importance of randomization now um you know you, uh, you should know that randomization is very very important as far as statistics um is concerned and then we'll look at it is important so one it is the cornerstone of all statistical methods it is the cornerstone of all statistical methods so randomization actually runs through all statistical methods and very very important now two it's average out effect of extraneous factors extraneous factors so nuisance variable so randomization has the tendency to average out effect of extraneous factors now it reduces bias and systematic errors it reduces biasness and systematic errors all right so now we look at the types of design structure types of design structure or types of designs so one is complete randomized design what we call the crd complete randomized design two randomized block design rcbd my favorite randomized block design and three latin square design lsd four multi-factor design 
balance incomplete designs bibd factorial design and nested design so in this course we will probably treat complete randomized than crd randomized block design latin square and factorial design as far as our course outline is concerned nested design and balance incomplete design and multi multi-factor design are considered in level 400 second semester all right so so soon we've come to the end of today's lecture and then i will advise that you kindly read your, your your slides given to you by your lect your lecturer so that when you watch this video this video will not be a substitute but rather it will be a complement to what the lecturer has actually taught in class.